Okay, as obstacle avoiding robots or cars go, this guy probably isn't the smartest kid on the block, but it shows what can be done in only 125 lines of code. It will not come as any great surprise that the brains of the outfit is our old friend, the Arduino Uno, and I've fitted a special motor control shield on the top of it, which is providing the motive power. On the front here, we have the ultrasonic sensor, which we reviewed in an earlier video. The heart of this motor driver board is the L293D chip. That will be the focus of our attention today when we look at the Elegoo Lesson 29, on driving a DC motor. Looking now at the simple Eligu example, this example introduces some important new concepts. Firstly, the breadboard power supply. When driving motors, you cannot drive them directly from the Arduino. It does not have enough power to do so. This is why it's using the L293D motor driver IC. This is the power supply that we'll be using and it plugs directly into the breadboard, just take care of the orientation for the positive and negative rails. Each rail is selectable 3.3 or 5 volts. The power supply itself is powered by an external adapter provided in the kit. Here it clearly shows the orientation so that you get the positive and negative rails the correct way round. Most important. Equally important is plugging the IC in the right way round. You have the small indentation that will indicate which is pin 1. The IC itself has a wide-ranging power supply input, therefore it can be used to drive many, many different types of motors at a current of up to 1 amp per channel. Each IC is capable of driving two motors. I'll leave you to go through the technical description should you feel so inclined. The connections to the Arduino are just the PWM outputs from the Arduino. Effectively, these are being amplified by the IC. Here we see the schematic with the motor connections from the output of the IC and the PWM outputs from the Arduino providing the drive signal. This is how the breadboard looks in the diagram. Here now we can see it in reality. Turning our attention now to the sketch, the definitions here, the enable pin and the drives for each of the motor directions. In the setup, it's just setting the pin modes and starting the serial monitor. In the loop, it will be printing on the serial monitor what the motor is going to be doing, reversing direction and speeding up and down. The digital writes here to drive the motor the first direction. Direction A is high and B is low. Then after a delay, it reverses. Now we see the motor speeding up and then slowing down with the associated delays between the different speeds. In this part of the sketch, it's introducing the different PWM values to alter the speeds. So it starts at 255 and then drops the speed down by increments with a two second delay between them. At the end of those changes in speeds, there is a delay of 10 seconds before the cycle will repeat. I've already uploaded the sketch to the module, but we're going to need the computer connection, one, to power the Arduino, and secondly, to enable us to see the monitor output from this serial monitor. Let's start the serial monitor. So as it says, one way and then reverse, the fast and slow. full PWM and slowing down. And repeating the cycle. Once again, a very simple but very important step in our understanding of the Arduino as to how it can control a DC motor. You can see it here attempting to spin but without the power supply switched on it doesn't have enough power 